Welcome to Weekly Homilies with Father Mark Sislanko, pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut, part of the Catholic Archdiocese of Hartford. I'm Carol Vassar, Parish Director of Communications, and this is Season 3, Episode 39, for the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, October 18th, 2020. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 21. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes it's easier trying to figure out what we owe to Caesar than it is to God. After all, we're very familiar with the process that we have to undergo each year with the payment of our taxes. The government gives us a form that has specific requirements. We fill it out and we pay what is due. Usually, it's a very concise, clear process. With God, it's a little bit more difficult. When we pay our taxes, we give back to the government a monetary amount that reflects its image. The government produces the money that we use for our exchange. And it's that very money that is then given back in taxes. What bears God's image that we can even possibly give back to him? What bears God's image? You see, in contemplating what we can give back to God, some of us kind of minimalize that a bit. And we establish this checklist of possibilities. Well, I can give back to God 20 minutes of prayer every day. I can give back to God a life of faithful service in the church. I can give back to God being kind and loving to my neighbor. I can give back to God a certain amount of sacrifices. I can give back to God a set of devotions. And so in establishing this checklist of possibilities of what we might be able to give back to God, as we complete each one, we check it off and we end up feeling pretty good that we've given back to God enough. But do those things that we often check off as things we give back to God, do any of them really bear God's image? Or are they things that just make us feel better about ourselves? What bears God's image? Well, Scripture is very clear on an answer to that question. When it tells us that human beings are created in the image and likeness of God. Human beings, you and I, are created in the image and likeness of God. So then what is more perfect of a gift to give back to God than the gift of our very selves? That is the one thing we have that bears God's image. 
And so how do we then make that return? How do we make that offering? How do we make that extension back to God if we are the very thing that bears his image and his likeness? Well, it has to do with our faith and how we see it and how we use it. You know, we're here as Christians because we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ preached a gospel that speaks of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ talks about forgiveness, inclusion, love of neighbor, love of self, love of God. There's a huge part of this that has to do with justice and peace and those wonderful beatitudes that talk about God's kingdom and how God envisions life for all of God's children. God's kingdom is a kingdom of opportunity, a kingdom where all people have a chance to share in the goodness and the blessedness of all of God's gifts. We believe in that gospel. We're here because we have faith in those words that Jesus spoke. They are words that say that there is a tension sometimes between the values of the world and the values of the kingdom. And we see that tension play out in his very life. And so for you and I who are asked to make the gift of ourselves back to God, we do that when we ourselves embody that very faith that we profess, when we take on those values of the gospel and bring them into the everyday business of our lives. We do that when we own the fact that we are in the image and likeness of God. And that as I act and interact in the world, I do so not just as myself, but I do so as the one whose image I bear. And that changes up how we conduct our affairs. You see, because in every sense of the word, we have our feet in two worlds. We have to live in this world. We have to interact in this world. It's a world that's been created and blessed by God. And so this world that in, in which we live is a world in which we have one foot. And then we have our other foot in the kingdom of God. And so the goal for us is to try to bring these two worlds together as much as possible. The problem is, is that we often leave this gospel faith, this beatitude faith in a closet. You see, we open the door and we use it when it's convenient for us to use it. We take it out when it suits us. But it doesn't always come with us because it's not something that in the secular world is often very popular. But yet it is that very gospel life, those beatitudes, the teachings of Jesus that hold the corrective to how we conduct the business of the world. It is that very gospel that has the power to set things straight. Not so that they reflect my vision, but so they reflect God's vision. See, because all too often, when we leave that gospel set of values in the closet and we go into the world, it's all too easy to fall into the trap of greed and self-focus. You know, we conduct business based on how it benefits me, how it, it can be used to my advantage, how it can be used to build up power, how it can be used to 
increase security, how it can be used to self-protect. And if those values are left in the gospel, we can easily do that by running roughshod over whoever is in my way of achieving that goal. Or worse yet, we can use what others have, take from them what is theirs, and put it to our own self-benefit. And this is what happens in a world that leaves the values of the gospel in the closet, that acts as if the kingdom of God is not important, and simply goes about what is self-beneficial. And for you and I who are Christians, for you and I who believe in that message, then it is that message that needs to influence not only our personal life, but our corporate life as well. It is that message that has the solution to a lot of the world's problems. Pope Francis speaks of this so often, of trying to get us to see that it is the kingdom of God that is of greatest importance. Imagine if you would, if all of us were convinced that what we are asked to give back to God is the very image of God that we are, and that our task is to deepen our appreciation and sense of the giftedness of ourselves as a vessel of God, that as I live and as I interact in the world, I develop this contemplative sense that what I do is not just being done for me, but that I act and I live with the mind and the heart in the very presence of God. It's an incredible responsibility, but also one that when taken seriously has to come with some measure of personal sacrifice. And I guess that's what's required when we are asked to give something back. Father Mark Sislanko is the pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Learn more about our parish community at isidoreandmaria.org and follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our music comes free of charge from Blue Dot Sessions in Fall River, Massachusetts. I'm Carol Vassar. Thanks for listening. Thank you.